Welcome to Service Autopilot. Hi, my name is Scott and I am a trainer here at Service Autopilot and I just want to welcome you and uh, thank you for joining. In these videos, we're going to have five quick start videos that will teach you core training of Service Autopilot. If you'll do exactly what I'm doing on my screen in your system, this will teach you the very basics and help you get some hands-on training as well. So what will we be covering? So here's the five. How to add a client. Next, how to schedule a job. How to dispatch and confirm that the work's been finished. How to generate an invoice and get paid. And how to manage appointment scheduling from the calendar screen. So these are just five quick start short videos that'll help you get going. Again, if you'll just follow along, they'll help you out a lot. Now, before we actually get into the videos, let's go ahead and, and look at something else. Since I'm in training, I would like to introduce you to some training options. Okay, so as you join Service Autopilot, you will have access to some different training resources. And we have class sign up. Let's just look at this one right quick. We have multiple different types of online training courses where it's live training. And it's just like signing up for a, a real class with a real instructor. You can ask questions during this time. And each one of them are about an hour and 15, an hour and a half. And if you go to this page, you can register for them. So sign up for the class and that'll let you register. It's real simple, real easy. Just kind of follow the instructions along. No problem. Here's an, also a recorded video. Obviously, you know, you can't ask questions when you're watching a video, but that's the way these work. Is each one of these, we have intro classes. We highly recommend that you go through these first. These are all free, by the way. These webinars, these live webinars. And I conduct some of these and another trainer here named Brian, he conducts some of them as well and I just look forward to seeing you in some webinars here in the future some more resources that you have at your fingertips uh, we have past class videos okay so we've got some videos here here's some past ones all right so these are these are a little older but uh, you might be able to benefit from those as well uh, let's go ahead and look at the next option there's some how-to videos. We're currently updating these videos, and we try to stay on top of that. But these are some more resources, just training videos that you can watch. And last but not least, down here, you could actually sign up and come to the Dallas area. That's, of course, where we're located. And you can come to our offices, sign up for training. It does cost. You have to pay for that. That's what this last resource is. This gives you some information on how to do that and how to sign up. And I would love to meet each of you, so please consider maybe even coming to Dallas and having live one-on-one -on -one training. Now, in addition to all these resources here, as you sign up, you may or may not know it already, but you get two free one-on-one -on -one sessions. Now, to utilize your time wisely, we recommend that you go through your free live webinars first with each of these different subjects. And then after you've completed these live webinars, call up support and say, hey, I need one-on-one -on -one training. I've already gone through my webinars. And I'd love to just go ahead and schedule a training session with one of the trainers. And the way that works is we'll log into your computer and um, uh, it'd be almost like just sitting next to you. And we'll just cover whatever you'd like to cover. And so that's absolutely free. You get two free training sessions. So those are all of the resources that we have available for training. And just hope you take advantage of that. All right, so let's get back here. I'm just going to go back to my day page. And again, if you will follow along in your system, go ahead and and just do the same thing that I'm doing, then all of these different subjects that I just mentioned a little while ago will be covered in these five quick start videos. So let's get started. So let's first, the first video has to do with adding clients. So let's go ahead and do that. The easiest way to add a new client to the system is to go ahead and just go up here to the little plus sign, which is known as add, and we're going to add a new client. So I'm just going to click on the client there. This brings up what we call the edit screen for the client and in this case we're not editing anything yet we're actually just entering it in so we're going to put some basics in all right we're just for these videos alone we're just going to focus on the basics and the basics here focus on putting in a name a phone number an address so let's go ahead and do that now okay i'm just going to put in one so this is going to be adam adams and all right and you'll notice that we have a little nickname here if this guy's name was robert uh you might put Bob in the little nickname area, if that's what he goes by. And then you got his last name first, first name last. If you needed to change that, you can, obviously. You can change that, highlight it, and just go ahead and start typing to uh, put the new information in. And let's say this was a commercial client. If it were a commercial client, you could actually just change that maybe to the commercial client's name. And then that would be the client name for this particular client. I'm not going to worry about putting in an email address at this time. So we'll go ahead and just put in a, a phone number. Uh, let's go ahead and put it in a work number here. 
And so you can put any contact information. Now, this screen, currently, this contact area right here, this is going to be the contact information for whatever this person's name is. And you can fill out as much of that as is applicable. And then next, let's look at the address area. Now, the address area is, is very important. I'm going to put in here... All right, so when you add in your service address, it will default automatically to whatever your billing address is. So if you need to change that, maybe your billing needs to go actually to a P.O. box or something of that nature, go ahead and just edit that and change it if you need to. But if you don't, you can just leave it alone. Something to know about the service address that's very important is in-service autopilot. Whenever we get to the scheduling part of things, we have a routing system. Within that routing system, the way that it knows where to begin or, or where a particular job might be for this particular client, it's going to geocode this service address. All that means is that it's going to assign it a latitude and a longitude. And to be able to see the latitude and longitude, you can look right over here. And once I save this, it'll actually assign a latitude and longitude to this particular client. Okay. All right. And that's it for the basics on this screen. There's a lot of tabs across the top here. Just to, since this is kind of a quick start, just to get you going, I'm going to only focus on a couple of the main ones, obviously the personal information, and then we're going to go into billing next. So let's go ahead and look at the billing. If you did happen to have an email address on the uh, previous tab over here, then you don't have to put it in twice for billing if you plan on emailing your client. So in this case, I'm not going to worry about the email. We're to say that we're going to uh, send our invoice by print. In other words, we're going to print it out and mail it to them in a regular envelope. And so printing is, is the option I'm going to choose there. How they pay you. So this is another very important field that you would want to fill out. If this client has agreed to pay by check, that's great. Or you have other credit card options and, and cash and so on as well. So uh, we'll just go ahead and leave that as, as check. If you do charge taxes in your part of the country, go ahead and choose whichever one is applicable there. If this is a nonprofit or a non-taxable client, you can go ahead and choose that there. As far as account numbers go, we do have a way to actually auto-populate account numbers. That's found in the company information screen. Billing terms. Now, this is another important one that we will talk about. And so whatever billing terms you've agreed to with this client, uh, in other words, uh, when they're going to pay you, uh, you know, I would highly recommend you go ahead and set that up so you know if they're late, uh, you'll be able to tell that uh, by setting the billing terms. And then when to invoice. This one's extremely important. This is going to be in Service Autopilot when an invoice gets generated. So in Service Autopilot, we have what's called auto invoicing. In other words, we automatically create invoices for you so you don't have to do it manually. It saves you a lot of time. It's a great automation process. And let me explain each one of these just so you have a better understanding of what they mean. Currently, this one is set for monthly. And so as a monthly client, uh, the billing period for a monthly client means that if any services that I complete in a given month, in other words, from the beginning of the month to the last day of the month or the first to the last day of the month, any services that I complete during that time frame, they will all go on the same invoice. Okay, so if, if I have monthly set. Uh, let's just kind of work up and then we'll come back down. Uh, it's, if it was set to weekly, weekly means that any services that I complete during the course of a week and the way we define a week is from Saturday to Saturday. So anything that you perform for a client, any type of services, they will all end up on the same invoice for that whole week. Okay, so in, during that weekly billing period. Daily, uh, daily just simply means as soon as you complete a job, it'll go ahead and create an invoice, the system will, the same day. Now, print in advance is very much like daily. And so print in advance means that you could actually set a, a client up for that and they would be able to receive their invoice when your technician or your crew or team actually goes out to their property because what print in advance means as soon as you dispatch a job you'll be able to print that out give it to your team member there your crew or a technician or uh, whoever it may be going to the property give that to them and they can actually leave the invoice at the property when they finish the job on invoice on a custom billing date it's the same as monthly, only you get to choose the billing cycle. So this is currently April that we're in right now. And 
I would be in a new billing cycle right now, which it would have started on the 15th of April, and it'll go through the 15th of May, and that'll be the billing cycle. So a way that, the way that this one is set up currently, it will actually generate invoices on the 15th of May at about midnight. And, it, and by the way, uh, all of these, except for daily and print in advance, will be at about midnight whenever it comes to the end of their billing cycle. So on a Saturday at about midnight, last day of the month at about midnight, and in this case, on the 15th at about midnight. That's when we run a process that will automatically create all of these invoices so that you can then send them out the next day or whenever you choose after the invoices are generated. Okay, so that is it for setting up this portion of the client, the billing tab. So we've covered personal information tab up here and all that goes with it. Again, you know, a lot of this stuff is kind of self-explanatory, but that is how you set up a client. And so in the next video, over how to schedule your very first job. So that's all for this one. And again, thank you for joining Service Autopilot.